Hi everyone, it's Karen from Karen's Quilts, Crows and Cardinals blog and Redbird Quilt Co. Here for the next installment of our 2016 free motion quilt along using the Susie B Growth Chart Panel Lose Balloons. Today we're going to share in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to actually quilt the motif that we discussed about that we were going to do in Lou down here at the bottom and maybe we're going to repeat uh, um, the same motif or maybe something a little different up above. So I'm going to run through a quick tutorial on uh, the whiteboard and show you just how I would go ahead and quilt that and then we're also going to jump over here while we're at it. We're going to jump over here to the little um, little B and talk about the pebbles that are going to trail behind him. But first what we're going to do is do this on, on the whiteboard and then what I'm going to do is cut away and we're going to come back and I'm going to stitch it on my machine. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit again uh, then about the quilting on the black border here that we had already discussed in the how to quilt that video. So let me just get started right away. Um, in the loose balloons, uh, at the bottom of the panel here, what we discussed was that fabric talking to us and having these beautiful little swirls in here. We also discussed the fact that you don't want to quilt this um, too densely because you want a little bit of poof and a little bit of lift to, to lose wool. You don't want it to be all knocked down. So the first thing that I'm going to do when we do the video of the machine quilting is I'm going to go ahead and I'm probably going to use this outside color. I think it was Dove, the RFL Dove color. And I'm going to go around the whole um, loo with the Dove color. And then what I'm going to do is use that same color or maybe something with a little bit of a silver tint to it. I'll show you in the next video. And I'm going to come right inside here and start stitching these swirls. And let me just show you here on the whiteboard what I have in mind for that. Okay, I'm going to flip over here. Actually, I think I'll move the whiteboard a little closer this way. That'll work. Okay, so I think in what, for the swirls, because we don't want to make them too dense, and, and Lou is very um, tiny compared to some of the swirls that we could do, I think we're going to start outside and just go in once, come back out, maybe do a little loop, and then another swirl. Come back in, out, loop around, and swirl. I hope that you can see that. We're going to use a little loop, or what I refer to as a loop-de-loop, to kind of move around the fabric. So you see it when I'm coming into the middle of the swirl, I'm not going too far, but I am putting a nice little curve on it, backtracking it back out, which you don't have to stay right on the line. Do a little loop and into another swirl. You can backtrack it back out, another loop, and into another swirl. Now you don't necessarily have to backtrack that loop back out. You can actually create a little wave type action by coming off of that line and then looping around and into your next one. So I think if we do something just this, you know, just not more dense than this, that it'll work perfectly inside of loose wool. So let me just do that a little bit more so that you can see it. We're, I'm going to start with my needle in, in the center. Um, Oh, actually, I'm not, <laughs> because I'm going to start on the edge of the panel. I'm not going to start in the center. I'm going to actually start on the edge of Lou, come around, do a loop, go to the center, and come out and travel. Do a loop-de-loop, -loop, come into the center of swirl, work my way back out, a loop, a swirl, come back out, loop, swirl, come back out and just use that loop. You can change directions of the swirl and the loop as you go. I think because we have such a beautifully defined area that we need to fill in, we shouldn't get in too much trouble. I'm going to probably start down here at the bottom and work my way around. And now that's after I did the outline stitching, which you'll see in the next video. Okay, now let's just move over here to the, um, to the, little, to the little B because we're going to do some quilting on the bee while we have that background color in let's jump over here and do a little bit of quilting on this whoops I'm sorry you can't see what I'm pointing at um, a little bit of background stitching on the bee so what we talked about in the how to quilt that video was these nice little trailer um, dots here that we have just putting little pebbles around them and I'll show you how I would draw the pebbles and then we're going to come around and outline the bee and then basically just echo stitch that whole area a couple of times to give the bee movement. And let me just show you here on, um, on the video how I would do that. Can you see that? I'm going to come back out a little bit. All right. Um, 
What I would do is probably start out at the at the last pebble, and I'll do that in the next uh, machine stitching video. But let me show you how I do pebbles. When I stitch pebbles, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but personally, I love to just go a full circle, and I find personally that my pebbles come out more round when I do a full circle. Now when you do a full circle you're going to find that you're doing a lot of backtracking and this is one of the reasons why I so love to use RFL 50 weight thread because with the 50 weight thread you can backtrack what I call backtrack um, it without a lot of dense thread buildup. So you're going to make a full circle move right into the next circle but then you're going to find that you have to backtrack on the same line to get to the starting point of another circle unless you're doing you know a snow mound or something like this a snowball mound um, so if you're doing a line of pebbles though say we're just going to do a line of pebbles you're going to do a pebble and then another one and you're going to have to backtrack to the next one do you see what I mean and it's okay, and it is even okay if you don't stay right on the line because what I find once you get all these pebbles in place is that it's really, um, especially if you're just learning, don't, don't stress about it. It's okay, they'll still look beautiful. I also find that the more um, um, momentum that I have, and you don't necessarily have to go fast, but what you want is your stitch length um, short enough that you can have a rounded edge. If your stitch length is very long, you're going to find it very hard to make a rounded edge on those pebbles. So let me just continue the thought. We're going to do the line of pebbles, and then we've got kind of the little B up here. We're going to just fall right into outline stitching the B, and then we're just going to come down and echo all the line of pebbles that we already made. All the way down one side and back up the other side and back around the B. And we're going to do that a couple of times. It'll give the B some beautiful movement. So that's what we're going to do today. We may drop down and work a little bit. Let me back you up here a little bit. Um, while we're here in this part of the panel and with the colors we have on, we may um, jump down here to the cloud. And I know I talked about in the How to Quilt That video by Plans for the Cloud. And let me just share that with you real quick. Um, I'm not sure we're going to get to that in this um, two video session, but we, we may. So this is the cloud that we have here around Lou. Ooh, let me bring it in. There you go. Can you see? This is my, my fake cloud that's going up against the edge of the panel. And what I'm thinking about is we're just going to stitch around the outside of it and it probably fairly close. And then what we're going to do is kind of jump in and echo that, but with quite a large echo, about an inch. Now normally when we echo stitch, we're stitching fairly close to something, but I think so that we don't knock down the balloon, I'm sorry, the cloud, too much, we want to just come in and just do a really heavy, um, wide echo stitch, kind of like this, what I'm showing you here, like about an inch wide. So stay tuned. I'm going to jump on the machine, get my um, outline quilting done, which I'll talk to you about. I'm sorry, get the black um, border stitched, which I'll talk to you about in the next video. And then together we're going to go ahead and do the loose uh, swirls. We're going to do a little bit of work on the bee, and then we may even jump down here and do this cloud in this week's session. And I hope that um, if you have any questions, you please just jump in and leave them for me. Send me an email, leave them on the blog, uh, put them on, a, on the Facebook post uh, for the tutorial. Uh, all that stuff will work. So I'll see you back here soon. Again, it's Karen's Quilts, Crows, and Cardinals blog and Redbird Quilt Co. And we're here for the 2016 free motion quilt along uh, using the Lose Balloons growth chart panel. And we're having fun. We're finally getting to stitch. Thanks for your patience.